lots to do and see the forest where you are. We'll cook up some fun adventure fantasies, some history and mystery, the magic. It's easy. I love to go there. Come and go there now. Wow! Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Gumbo And this is a map of the United States. This blue line I'm drawing shows you the Mississippi River. It's really big. Our Gumbo Island Adventure Journal over there says the Mississippi River is the third longest river in the world. It's 3,892 miles long. Let's see. It starts at Lake Itasca in northwest Minnesota and gathers water from 41% of the continental United States. That's almost half the country. Says here, the normal water flow is 616,000 cubic feet per second. It would fill the New Orleans Superdome in less than a minute. And as that water runs by, it works like a broom on the riverbank, scraping and sweeping soil away from every state on the way to Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico. Look at it. The Mississippi River is one of the best highways you could have. It runs right through the middle of America. Explorers from France and Spain used it. We can too. Let's explore right now. When I say one, two, three, you say Gumbo Island. Ready? One, two, three. Gumbo Island. This is where the first big Native American settlements were in Louisiana because the high ground kept floods from coming to people's homes. There's a sculpture near here that tells the story of how Indians did their business here and placed the red stick to mark the spot. The, when explorers from France saw the red stick, they named the spot on the river Baton Rouge. That's French for red stick. Come aboard and you'll see the river is still a big business spot for Baton Rouge. Hi, I'm Britt Henderson. Hi, Britt. I'm Bill Grantham, and this is my business capital fleet, and this is the Mississippi River. Britt, we're 230 miles from the mouth of the Mississippi River up here in Baton Rouge, and basically our business is a parking lot for barges. We have barges from all over the United States come here, carrying all types of cargoes. What kind of things do the barges carry? The barges will carry anything from coal to rock to petroleum products, crude oil, grain, building materials, scrap iron, just about anything that can be carried can be put in a barge. Let me show you the difference between tugboats and towboats. How can you tell the difference between a tugboat and a towboat? Captain Ed here is a tugboat. It's used to dock and undock ships. A tugboat has a pointed bow. That's the front of the ship. A towboat has a flat bow on its front. That's used to push barges. Let's go for a ride on a towboat. This is Captain Donnie Canella. He's the captain of this towboat that we're riding on today. How you doing, Brian? Hi. Where's your steering wheel? We have sticks to control the rudders, and we're moving from side to side. And add throttles to control the speed of the engines and forward and reverse. We're on a small fleet boat. These are small boats that are used to move single barges on and off the larger river boats that pass by. And larger river boats can handle up to 20 or 30 barges at a time and just move tremendous amounts of cargo. The 
barges are actually lashed together by our deck ends to literally tie these barges together and tighten them down. These guys work five nights, then they'll work five days, and they'll take five days off on the fleet boats. The larger river boats, the guys will work 30 days on. They actually live on the boats. Sounds like hard work. It's a pretty hard life, but the, you meet some good people and the money's pretty good. And the guys that have been out here for a long time can look around and, and tell which company's boats are passing by by the symbols that are on the smokestacks of the different vessels. Capital Fleet uh, can be recognized by the single red C on a white stack. That's our symbol. People all over the inland waterways know that that's a Capital Fleet boat. Thank you, Captain. Okay. Grit the River is a busy highway. The boat can leave Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or St. Louis, Missouri, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, and go all the way to Mexico or to the far reaches of the Florida shore without ever having to cross land. I'm going to send you down river to New Orleans now, where you'll learn about an invention called a steam engine that changed the face of American river travel. Thank you. I had a great time. Well, thank you. Come back and see us. Bye. Bye. Hi, Britt. I'm Clara Eisenhower. I'm the River Lorian on the American Queen. My job is to tell people about the river. Did you know that we're at 95 miles from the mouth of the river here in New Orleans? I work on a steamboat. Steamboats are run by steam engines, which turn those paddle wheels there to go up and down the river. Before the steamboat, people came down in flat boats, which, which were just rafts, and keelboats, and they were made out of wood. They get down here to New Orleans and they couldn't get back up the river. So they sold their boats and they walked back up river. Sometimes it took them two months or more to get back to Nashville or to Pittsburgh. Wow, that sounds interesting. I better write that down. Okay, and also the steamboats made this our first interstate highway on the river. They'd bring cotton and they'd bring people and they brought entertainment to the rivers with the showboats. Would you like to see some steamboat and entertainment? Yeah, I like that. Okay, why don't we go on board? I'd like you to meet Britt Henderson. Britt, this is Mr. Tom Hook, and these are the entertainers on the American Queen. Hi, Britt. Pleased Hi. to meet you. How are you? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Say, you ever see a banjo like this one? Now, banjo is America's only native instrument. In fact, it uh, descended from an instrument that comes to us from Africa called the banjar. And banjo was one of the instruments that they would have played on uh, steamboats and showboats like this one. In fact, steamboats and showboats like this one were very responsible for spreading music all over America's heartland back in the middle of the 19th century. They played all kinds of music on steamboats, uh, songs like this one. Let's see if you recognize this song. show you. Shall we go on? Bye. 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 Where were we? This is called the chart room. Chart's the word they use for maps on the river. We made this room so the passengers could feel like they were in the pilot house steering the boat. Pilot wheels like this are what used to be used to steer the boat. Sometimes they were even bigger. Wow. I can barely reach all the way across it. That's right. People used to travel on the steamboats because they were like floating palaces. They'd get them from place to place. They'd sleep in luxurious rooms. They could eat the finest of food in the dining room. 
There was the finest of brass and silver fixtures throughout the boat, including silver water coolers and brass doorknobs. And then there was that steam calliope back there with its shining brass whistle. The music they played on that could be heard for five miles to let people know the steamboat was coming. It was really a trip to remember back then. As easy as it was to travel on the River Brit, it's a lot harder to control the river. We're going to send you from here where we are all the way upriver to Old River Control Structure. Wow. Thank you. I had a great time. I enjoyed meeting you, too. Bye. Bye. River control structure in Bachelor, Louisiana. It may be hard to see from the ground, but this is built to protect cities downriver from flooding. It tries to keep the Mississippi River running by Baton Rouge to New Orleans. Experts say every 500 years or so, the river changes its mind about where it wants to flow. And until earthworks and structures like this one were built, the Mississippi rolled where it wanted. The river is so powerful, it acts like a garden hose that's twisting wildly. The force of the water makes it twist. And the dirt the river dumps pushes the flow this way and that. Now, pretend my hand is the old river control structure. See, by pinning the river down, it tends to stay in one place. These locks and old river are like the hand on the garden hose. They hold the river. If the waters get too strong, too deep, experts at Old River can turn the giant gears in here, which open the locks outside, releasing the extra water, sort of like a safety valve. There are also spillways that do the same sort of thing. Almost everyone agrees, if enough rain filled the river, it could one day overrun this control structure and anything else that might stand in its way. at the way several Indian nations said the name of the river long ago. Micha, Misha, mighty, great. Sebe means waters. Say it quickly, Micha Sebe, and you'll hear what the first explorers heard. Micha Sebe, Micha Sebe, Micha Sebe. Mississippi is how they remembered it. Wasn't that Gumbo Island adventure fun? Write down what you saw in your adventure journal so you can always remember what you learned about the Mississippi River. Bye! I know a place with lots to do and see the forward way.